uh, based on titles, which songs do you think you will like the most? Just from the titles? Um, that's a that's a an, an interesting question that I've never got. Um, I just like listen, um, looking at the... A lot's gonna change. Sounds pretty epic, I guess. Uh, mirror forever. Like, if you put two mirrors like in a perspective they're going like in a in definitive like a reflection in a way it also sounds pretty interesting and i guess there's also wild time somebody was t talking about that one if that track is a wild time i will have a wild time i guess and um, picture me better always uh, was also a very interesting title picture me better Kind of like reminds me in the movie Titanic wasn't there like Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't here uh, a painter, so maybe picture me better, paint me better. Hmm. I can't really, I can't really um, out of like just the titles right here, my favorite or something, but we'll see. I mean the music is the important thing, right? Um, <clears throat> Andromeda and Every Day are my favorites. I'm sure you will enjoy them. Alright. We'll see. Movies is also great. Okay. A lot of favorites, a lot of favorites. <laughs> Let's listen. A lot's gonna change the first track. Let's go. Let me know if the volume is alright. If it's not alright, scream. Sounds like a broken piano. Some gentle drums. Pretty different from her other album, just from the beginning. Oh, nice back and vocals right here. Also, there's so much going on just like from the first track, while it's not too much. You know what I mean? Oh, let's stop right here. It's not too much. Uh, we also had a very string heavy album uh, yesterday, Wulnikura. Um And this one was right here, like, straight from the first track. It wasn't too baroque, I guess. Uh, and it has a really like a smooth strings kind of arrangement type of uh, production. Um, it sounds pretty distant. Some The vocals are pretty distant and the sound um, Pretty weirdly compressed, but I like it on the first track. It has a pretty sad feeling or a melancholic feeling as the first track. The strings really use some weird chord progressions, um, but I enjoy those. Those are great. Let's move on. Arrangements are beautiful. It's a dropping also. But the drums are definitely not the main part of this track right here. And the pianos get some delay also at the back end. Some like lo fi kind of feeling. I first thought that those last chord progression is going to be unresolved, but great ending also to this track. The first track, uh, pretty different actually from Hearts of Glow, just from my perspective right here. 
uh, but it, I really enjoyed this track right here. It was, yeah, Forgot How Beautiful. This one, yeah, this one was beautiful. Those string arrangements sometimes just really shred, to be honest. Like, um, there's some melancholy about them, um, but I don't really am sure why I get a um, melancholy feeling like that. Sometimes the lyrical themes go into that, but not straight into it. Um, no one can keep you down. If your friends and your family sadly don't stick around, it's high tide you learn to get by because you got what it takes in your lifetime. So there's some hope in this, um, in these lyrics, but there are a lot of things lost right here. And then let me change my words, show me where it hurts. And then it will probably go into the second track right there. A lot's gonna change in your lifetime. Try to leave it all behind in your lifetime. It's something between that. I mean, leaving something behind to get something new out of your lifetime is always a melancholic feeling, if you think about it. Um, but the way she presented it around right here was beautiful and um, genius. I didn't dislike anything about this track. Um, have you listened to the Lana Del Rey albums? No, I haven't listened to any Lana Del Rey albums actually, but I know some tracks that were on the radio and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I guess the rating for this track right here, straight into something in between a 9 and a 10, there wasn't really something that I disliked, so I don't really know why I would give this one a 9. But it didn't blow me away as so a first track, but I guess as an intro, it sure makes sense to not go straight fully in a punch in your face, if you know what I mean. While her previous album also didn't do that. Uh, not her previous, her latest. You haven't jail. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I know some tracks, I guess. Uh, video games, is that a right? Uh, beautiful, beautiful track. Um, I guess I will get to her music. Jail. Alright, don't cross me. But yeah, beautiful track. So let's see what the second track would do. Andromeda, so this was a, this was a fan favorite. Got 45 million um, plays actually. That's a lot. So also very widespread. Also with this beautiful cover. So this was the singer or something. But yeah, let's listen. Oh yeah. Are those strings? Oh yes they are. What is, what is that? They sound so weird. Stop here. That's what I call a chorus. Not too much. It's still got a very smooth vibe and to those strings especially. But <clears throat> since like the vocals get like tripled or something like that, they are all over the place, stereo, they get panned and doubled. Uh, amazing arrangement and that vocal style right there is beautiful. And she doesn't have to shout or scream for that to do these beautiful little things right there. And I guess it's perfect uh, for that chorus. And the strings are so weird. They are like, they have this really weird, um, maybe even like wobbly filters on them. It could be like some old vinyl filters that you can kind of like snap onto your effect board on your um, kind of DIW of your choice. But I guess. Uh, the beautiful start to this um, um, track list right here with those first two, but let's see where this gets. I also um, uh, heard a slide guitar with like some bottle thing right here. Yeah, awesome fretless. Why well, I don't think they are fretless? Yeah, 
Jeg tager flot op. True. It really makes the strings pretty fucked up actually, but it still sounds beautiful. And but I'm quite good as a center. Kind of like a if the Titanic would be rising. Makes sense. Also, the lyrical content was pretty interesting. Kind of like this, um, this feeling of um, depending your heart on someone. If that makes maybe sense, uh, love is calling. It's time to let it through. Final love that will make you. I dare you to try. Crazy guy, I think this is deep. I think it's meant to be more than anything I can think of. Kind of like a little bit reminds me of. Um, Ethel Kane's last album she dropped last year. Um, what's your favorite album of 2022? I'm currently also doing my list for that. Um, I will do some videos on that. Like my favorite EPs, albums, and tracks. My favorite album, though, um, am I gonna say it? Or do you have to wait for the video? No, I don't care. Uh, it's Hellfire by Black Midi. Yeah, the Ethel Kane's album is beautiful, and it also kind of like has a lyrical content sometimes in this track. Like for example, that one track about her previous boyfriend. Um, if that was on that, um, I, I think it was. I listened to also some other things. Um, but yeah, um, this one right here. Now I just kind of like lost my point, but. Yeah, this one really was uh, really beautiful um, um i think that i loved every single second of this one the guitar was amazing um they were losing like these little borders uh, that you uh, get on your fingers i guess and then you slide on your guitar and it makes this really beautiful little little track uh, western nights yeah that makes yeah that that trick I, I think that was it west blood has a song with lana del rey very beautiful too that's great i'm really uh, looking forward to maybe some lana del rey stuff in the future We'll see. But yeah, um, yeah, I think this one was a 10, to be honest. The first 10 of the night, and it's the second track, the first also like scratched that itch a little bit. But yeah, this, this is great so far. I love this one. Um, with some further listens, I, I, I don't think that I will hate this one ever. <laughs> um, I wanted to actually listen to that one again. Like, it was um, like, there was no big part or like um, like big crescendos or something you don't really need that stuff um, I, I guess there are some like more lengthy and more layered parts of that track um, and join it right there but I think it was beautifully arranged uh, every part of that also the string was really interesting the effect um, kind of bought it if, you, if that makes sense anyways so let's see what the next track will do which is called Everyday also fan favorite I guess um, some people talked about that one. Every day is what made me fall in love with Waste Blood. All right, I see you. Every day is next, right? For free by Lana Del Rey, featuring Waste Blood and Zella Dale is such a good cover. Okay, probably her most immediately catchy. All right, let's see. Every day is such a. Let's go. Got some gospel feeling from the beginning. All right, kind of. Wake up, baby, it's getting late now. Feel every day. Oh, nice, yeah. But that's not enough. Our songs are a fan favorite. Damn. Really good mixing on this right here. When all the other instruments come in, it's not too full. Kind of like sounds the first piano we had on A Lot's Gonna Change. Oh, 
Alright. I see, I see you. The video for this one is iconic. Yeah, there's so much going on with this track, but there's a clear like main theme with those pianos. They kind of like jump in between those maybe two or three chords. Um, not a lot of like um, heavy different um, arrangements going on. It's pretty basic, but immediately catchy. You guys were really right with that one. And if all the other instruments, like for example, those acoustic guitars come in, it's not too full. It really gets some like space for like all the other different like little elements and it's really great. Um, also, I saw the like sailing off on my ships to nowhere. I got a lot of things to clear away. Got a lot of years bad love to make, okay. Wasn't that kind of like also the plot point of like the beginning of Titanic, the movie? Like just going onto the ship and like getting a win to just for this car to go in it just to have some fun or something like that. Um, I guess sure. It gets me every time. And then again, I might be falling down. I need a laugh every day. Nice little strings. Big drums at the end of it. Some big claps. Pretty late. Damn, it just moves on and on. Actually, there's all strings at the end right here, also pretty messed up. Kind of like a, some caretaker stuff. In a upper error, am I right? <laughs> Alright, that was every day. Such a banger, also, right here. Um, I really see if people like love that one, just like it immediately catches you with this, like very snappy um, pianos and the drums are amazing like they're not as busy as on the first two tracks um, well they are more up in the front it's like a main structure of the rhythm to get some like really um, like heaviness into this track which makes tra uh, sense and i think that every day is really great on this one right here also um, but i don't think it is as good as the previous track in Germany. But still great. Something we ended between 9 and a 10. Almost a masterpiece right here also. We'll see what some like further listens, but let's see what the fourth track would do, which is called Something to Believe. Let's see what she believes in. Drank a lot of coffee today. Same. A lost forgotten pearl and fire Also those little nice guitars again that we had on Andromeda, I think. Pretty different from the previous tracks, actually. Just sonically. Just sonically, I think that it sounds pretty different from like, all the previous stuff. Um, 
I love those like big little string swells and then those um, nice little slide guitars again coming in, like bottled little slide guitar or something like that. Those always sound beautiful and pretty beachy. I don't know why I feel like that. Um, also maybe makes just like, like sentences, maybe setting um, way the blood is in this album right here. Um, if you think about like the cover, it like suits it also. Um, but yeah, I think also that like there's pretty much going on with all the instrumentals in between, like every little section on this one right here, um, like getting some of these acoustic guitars and like so many little bit baroque kind of like aspects and ideas. It's like so much and it's beautiful. Um, I love Natalie's music videos for the last two hours. I didn't even watch, or no, I did. I did watch one music video for Hearts of Glow was beautiful. Um, I think it was, damn, I can't remember the name. It was the last single. I have to look that up. But yeah, it was beautiful. Um, I have to look those up for this hour right here also, to be honest. But yeah, something to believe right here is also really good. Um, let's see how is this one will end up. And this auto right here is also really good. And those slide guitars, damn, getting those little high notes into this one, like a This one was also really good. I don't think it was as good um, as the other tracks, but um, I think it's the most unique one if it goes into instrumentation and um, um, using some like a different like wall of sounds. Like there are a lot of wall of sounds where not being loud or not um, her shouting, not different instruments fighting each other to be the top instrument or the loudest one, if you know what I mean. Um, there's a kind of like a, a harmony in between all of these right here and that's just like perfectly well done on this one and uh, yeah I think that this one right here also deserves a high rating right here uh, something in between an 8 and a 9 on this one for sure so let's see what the next track would do um, which is called Titanic Rising the title track it's a pretty short one I guess it's an interlude it's a halfway of the song so that isn't. Damn, so so I like a little bit of electronic sound right here actually. Getting something different to this one right here into this part. Sounds like some ambient stuff by Brian Eno or something. Maybe there's a turn also into sound wise after this one. I guess we'll see. I mean, there were also some that went into a direction like this one right here in the last album, uh, in her latest album, Hearts of Glow. Um, but let's see what the movies will do. The sixth track. Yes, for sure there are like electronic elements onto the, in this one also. Damn those Alps. There's some like screeching little uh, strings floating around also.
Yeah, this one right here is, um, I guess, a little bit progressive, progressive pop side into some um, electronic sides also. Um, first, there were some like really interesting like um, backing kind of like instruments. It's like magic, yes. Um, like those ups work perfectly into this one. Um, I'm pretty interested if this album will continue with some like electronic sounds, um, but it's suits her. Um, there were like some tracks um, on her latest album that also went into some direction like that, uh, which weren't um, fan favorites really. Um, and right here, uh, she already perfected it, I guess. And I think that even those on the Hearts Aglow um, are beautiful and outerworldly and yeah, this one right here is no exception. Nice little chord change. Probably my favorite so far. While there aren't as many instruments of as on the other tracks. Oh damn. Getting into some like strings right here, also in this kind of like the copper version we previously did. Alright, some drums. Vocals right here. Like she also stretches these little words so much, it's beautiful. Also, those little different, like these right here, these backing vocals are amazing. And I didn't even realize all strings right here. Yeah, that would track progressively perfect. The um, switch up at the end right there into those drums um, that are not loud. It's not a heavy like part that punches you. It's beautiful. It's outerworldly. It's yeah, that one was perfect. Um, I'm gonna put that into my into my um, pre premium segment. That is my favorite track of this album right here. Um, so right here. That was a little bit too fast. Again. There we go. Hi. Perfect job, Gertie. Yeah, the crescendo was beautiful. Anyways. But yeah, this track right here was beautiful. Um, and it deserved that. Um, kind of like the 10, the monumental one right there. Um, so, that's my favorite so far. But let's see what the next track will do. Uh, Mirror Forever. We talked about that one at the beginning. Like when... Um, Someone asked like what are like the most interesting titles of this album right here in the track list that kind of like speak to me. That one's really speaks to me moment, so I guess we'll see. Mirror Fire, the seventh track. We're pretty deep into this um album right here, but uh it has been flowing perfectly. There's a kind of like a main theme or structure or idea in between every track right here. Um I don't think though that this one right here has a, like a deeper concept or something like that, but it is beautiful. So let's see what the next track will do. Meryl Pharaoh, this isn't. Alright. Yeah, this one's different. No one oh, so it's like Contrabass? Nah. Those are sims right here. So there's a lot of electronic things going on in the second side. Mm. 
Like also the kind of like the ideas of percussion and drums are very different each time. Damn, getting some like electronic heavy looking tasks on this one is beautiful. Jazzy feeling on those drums right here with those rides. Oh yeah, classic copper right there. Using also traditional pop a lot. I don't think this one is my favorite track so far, also. Um, but between like uh, movies and um, also Titanic Rising, this one also gets some like um, electronic like ideas into this one. But I don't think it works as much as on like the other tracks so far, um, like those uh, deep synthetic bass or like main synth right here sounds a little bit uh, weird, and like bogs down in this little um, like frequency and it sounds a little bit weird, but still. It's, it's a really good track. I really love those um, vocals on this one and the um, arrangements are beautiful. Still kind of like figuring out if there's like deeper story of this track. But that was uh, Mirror Pharaoh. I think this is my least favorite so far. Um, I wish there would be a little bit more to those um, like backing instrumentals, especially the electronic ones. Um, but I think that those um, really like splashy uh, and um, really nice um, produced snares are amazing on this one and they really get the feeling of like all the other ones like into this hopeful feeling while there's in between those like really slow vibe all over it the tempo is not fast of all these tracks and they really get like some time in between like the um, outro of mirror movies for example uh, the sixth track was um, pretty fast but yeah i really love this one still um i give this one an eight yeah so let's let's see what the next track will do. The eighth track, Wild Time. Wasn't there somebody who loved this one? I don't remember. But we'll see what they will do. I don't know if I'm correct, but I heard that Mirror Fire is about a friend who took their life, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's see about Genius Annotation, my favorite. It got 95 likes, so I guess it's valid. Refer puts you on the world, is serial and daunting. The lyrics highlight its circumstances, love that's continued out of pride, where each person wants to prove themselves up to the task, striving to be a savior, matter, um, prove their judgment, intuition, right or wrong. We love as hard as we can, glossing over who any of us really are until we are alone, looking in the mirror. Damn, so poetic, this is a genius annotation, which not really helped me with anything about the lyrical content is. So I'm also not 100% sure. Um, I guess i see you around the next time you call. I will get to these lyrics again with some further listens. Alone at work or something. Classic. Um, what time next? That's me. All right. It's you. Let's listen. What time? Let's go. I love those organs in the back. And the bass is amazing. Nice 
vocal harmony right here. Also a waste, but it also has really like a deep voice uh, while singing pretty hard. And it's a beautiful combination. Really breathy. Also love this these little electronic uh, little things going on. like end of this chorus right here beautiful and then after this these little electronic pinches are amazing oh. and we get back to those the beginning pianos nice Better are so good. Yeah, this track right here is beautiful. We got a wall of sound right here again. see that, that people love this one right here this track is really a wild time you will have a wild time with this one for sure and um, I lo really love those instrumentations like they are so different all over the place um, they are full like those strings those pianos those little electronic pages coming in and those um, vocal harmonies are all over the place like when she sings like there's a wild time uh, it's like this really uh, like intense and really also abstract almost um chord progression that's great um, the song feels so dystopian then i realize it's the world that we live in <laughs> yeah if you really like set yourself into this track right there um i had that one that feeling at movies like the sixth track um 10 out of 10. Mm, close to it I would say it's something between a 9 and a 10 right here. Um, I wish it would be a little bit more at the end, um, more into a, like a clear direction in the instrumentations. Like we get so much uh, like thrown at you, but there's no clear way in what is like really the instrument right here. And like way is a little bit like a singing and humming in the back and it's beautiful, but that's like a really little nitpick. But this one is a masterpiece again. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely a standout track right here on this album. So let's see what the fuss is all about. But the next track, the ninth track, Picture Me Better. Um, also pretty popular one, I guess, with six million tracks. Um, plays, I mean. So let's see what that will do. Almost some singer-songwriter. Even sounds like some really, really old traditional pop out of the likes of 30s, 40s, or maybe 20s. And it's beautiful. Like the last Father John Misty album also went into that, that, that direction right here. And I loved it. Yeah. Man, I don't really love shit like this. This is amazing.
really makes sense as one of her last tricks right here in this album. And her voice, yeah. Um, it's a main point to love this album, or Way is Blood in general, I mean. And Hearts to Glow. There were a lot of like different approaches on her vocal style, and right here is also pretty different, but also really beautiful. There's also a lot of like themes of heartbreak and stuff like that in this album. Waiting for the car from beyond. It's also pretty dark and shit. Oh damn, this is a vision. Yeah, this track is perfect. This is one of my favorites. A little larger. It reminds me of some of the like um, of the like beautiful arrangements by Shiro Sagisu on the Evangelion series when he was doing some strings stuff like that. And this is beautiful right here also. Not so fun fact. This song is actually about a friend of hers who killed him. So this is the track that um, Pickle Kuka was um, talked about, right? And. Um, I actually saw that waiting for the call from beyond that makes sense. Um, waiting for something with meaning to come through soon. Also a pretty nihilistic actually point of view, which also makes sense in that fact. Uh, picture us better, not picture me better, as the title says. Also it's the second verse from the, um, the first verse as a transition and the second part right there. We finally found a winter for your sweater. I got a brand new big suit of armor. It's tough. Since you left, I've grown so much. Um, it's an important fact for this track right here, and I think it's perfect. So this one right here, I really go straight into this stuff right here. This is more than a 10 right here. This is amazing. Um, this is how you do an um, acoustic um, kind of singer-songwriter track, also at the end of this album. And it makes a lot of sense to do something like that also. And I think this one really um, got the rank higher for f like Waste Blood in just like my head right here. This is like one of the best tracks ever. Um, also, like judging from Hearts Glow. Yeah, damn. The last track is a one minute track. Uh, it's a short one. Let's see what this will do. Let's listen. Wait, is the string section of like the first track a lot's gonna change? But a lot more clearer signal strings while being layered. Feels like an outro to a movie. Some Casablanca or something like that. And that's it. Then it fades. Damn, what a beautiful album. Um, I really love this album. This is such a different one, actually, from just like the feeling that I got while finishing this album right here. Um, while Hearts of Glow was sonically and uh, also lyrically a lot more uh, straight into like themes of like the current situations that you just like feel in and the isolation of yourself or something like that. While this run right here talks also about like uh, people around Waze Blood, also like about the relationship she had and so many different things also that it's beautiful. Her music feels like watching movie, yes. A hundred percent. And um, I think that then also the nearer to the at the end uh, really suits the ending. Very cinematic, yes. Yes. Um, I think they also really make sense to watch the music videos. Um, I will do that um, maybe when I um, close the stream <laughs> um, because I can't like watch it on stream because of copyright. But yeah, this was fun. This was great.
damn, actually, I think that uh, there's also a little bit of a, like a circle of this arbor right here. Like if you think about like how it started from the first track, a lot's gonna change and then near to the, like, I don't know about this track right here. I guess it's like from this Japan City thing, a bonus track or something, but it's kind of like a circle. Um, musical album circle or something like that and for that the the picturing the uh, sequencing of this album is perfect in that sense and i really enjoyed this one for that so thanks to all the people who uh, constantly requested this one well it was quite a while ago why uh, when i reviewed this album um, i think like maybe three or four months now that's quite long but well um, Titanic Rising by Way's Blood is a beautiful album, again, as I um, still think uh, months later. I listen to individual tracks really often after. Uh, for example, Andromeda is one of my favorite art pop tracks now. It's such a beautiful track. Movies also. Um, also, um, Picture Me Better uh, is something I come back to a lot. Especially Picture Me Better is... In my opinion, as I also read on the internet, pretty underrated track. Um, not that many people um, think like me for that track. Many think it's like, well, it's fine, nothing too big. But I think that one encapsulated the feeling of the time. Um, Waste Blood wanted to give this um, album the feeling of like the kind of early um, 1900s, um, if you know what I mean, and it kind of wants to go into that sound often into traditional pop into chamber music and things like that and that one really pictures it perfectly if you know what i mean um but yeah also the first track really gets you into the feeling of this album in a perfect way uh, the guitars on this album are perfectly used also while it wasn't really something oftenly used in like back in the 1920s 30s or something so there are also a lot of synthesizers on this album, which makes this a little more futuristic, which for me makes sense with this title of this album, Titanic Rising. I always think about like the, mu the movie Titanic, um, which I'm a little bit split on, to be honest. Uh, I think it's an overrated movie, but still that's another thing. Um, I still think that I really um, still love the concept and the story um, and how it was written back then while also it was a real tragedy if you think about it um but well this album right here is more futuristic because it's rising like something coming back to life something rising something uh, maybe in a sense um, backwards storytelling like when you uh, really go through this um so the story of this album, the writing of Way's Blood is just like really beautiful. You really can picture everything which she writes in a uh, very different way. It really always encapsulates me. And you can really see she really likes drama. And uh, um, there are some like personal stuff also flowing into this one. Um, while her later album, um, Hearts of Glow, are a little bit more different. The writing is a little bit more direct um, into stuff that everyone kind of like also has um, in their daily life and stuff like that right here it's really personal uh, so it's sometimes really hard to really get into the writing of this album but if you do um, like I did you really get some gems out of here um, the writing for that was just like really beautiful to me so um, it always like also the story is kind of like backwards <laughs> if, I, if I really think about it like you could easily play this album backwards and still make sense because the last track um, is the same instrumental as the first one so it's, it's really like a circle and if you I always thought if you listen backwards to it uh, it's like the Titanic is sinking <laughs> I don't know why but I did that one after uh, reading it on the internet I was like I will try that and I did and it sounds even more different and interesting so if you never did that um, listen to the album backwards it also really is something else with all these different sounds um, coming together um, i don't know why it did so much to me and the writing also the lyrical content some times here and there really makes sense then um, 
I also thought about like that um, like in Titanic the movie it's like a Roman story there's some um, Roman stuff here and there on this album right here and I thought about well this right here is more about like heartbreak and stuff also so I thought about well a Titanic it's a big and spoilers but I think everyone watched that movie um, at the end he dies right but I thought if you think about like if the Titanic the movie was like backwards uh, he comes back to life but they break up and stuff like that <laughs> does that make sense I don't know I thought always like there was something I get out of this little arbor right here in the writing um, I don't know maybe it's just a thing for me but yeah um, just a general sound um, I've never really heard an album that has a sound quite like this one uh, the instrument um, the instrumentals used on this one um, are so different you even have some ambience here and there sometimes just chambered sometimes just strings or her beautiful voice which is so beautiful and perfect um, she's one of the best singers I've ever heard uh, from the two albums I've listened to I know there's also one another uh, one other album um, but nobody really requested that one or it's not really popular or something like that I'm not sure I don't know but well yeah um, I don't know if they have anything else to add to this while I'm feeling a, a decent nine on this arm. It's beautiful. All right. Thank you for watching. See you.